check out this radical bike concept. A lot of work went into making it what it is today. In fact, about two and a half years went into making it what it is today. Even after that much time, the bike still is not working properly and as it should be, as it has several problems with it. Every time I tried to ride it, it felt like I was bending on the frame. It is like a regular bike, but also very different at the same time. The bike works by having extended crank arms in combination with a series of gears, which make the gearing much higher than on a regular bike. The basic concept behind this bike is that when you take the force of pressing down on both levers with both legs at the same time, combined with the force created by the levers all by themselves, that gives you a lot of force to move the high gearing at a fast rate. Let's take a closer look at the gearing. We'll start off with the big gear in the back and work our way down the line. Now I have a chain running from the big gear in the back all the way down to this small gear. Now as you can see, the gears and chains that I am using are not regular bicycle gears and chains, which is probably a problem. Now notice how I am going from a small gear to a big gear. Every time you do this, you are increasing the speed, making the gearing higher. Now let's take a closer look at the chain tensioner that I've put along this chain line. It's basically a gear mounted on a round bar with two washers in between, welded onto the frame, pressing it against the chain. It is poorly welded onto there, which leads into the problem of strength. There are several areas on this bike lacking sufficient welding, which means several areas of flexing. The strength requirements on this bike would be much higher than on a regular bike since you are dealing with much greater force. The lack of strength due to poor welding, due to low amperage and fairly poor welding technique means that I'm really lacking the strength necessary for this bike. Back to the chain tensioner. It is on an angle and welded poorly, meaning flex, meaning loss of energy. Now, moving on to the next chain line. Uh, the big gear is four times bigger than the gear in the back of it, meaning that it is in a four to one ratio and every time the small gear rotates around one time, the big gear has moved four times as much, meaning everything has sped up by four times, and the same thing is going on on this gearbox down here. It is also in a 4 to 1 ratio, meaning that everything is sped up 16 times going from the back all the way to here. Let's take a look at the chain tensioner. It is similar to the one that I have on the other chain line. One problem with these chain tensioners is that the hole in the gear is slightly off center, meaning that the gear wobbles as it rotates. So it's going to push on the chain different amounts as it rotates, creating different chain tensions. Now, here's another look at the bottom gearbox. Now, everything is sped up 16 times going from the back all the way to here. Another thing is that this gearbox is a homemade gearbox rather than a bottom bracket, meaning play and energy loss. Now, here is the gear being connected to the gears on the wheel with a chain being the chain line on a regular bike. Now, here are some pictures of the basic frame of the bike. Now, one of the first things I did was I took a big flat bar and I mounted it towards the top of the seat stays and having it extended into the back of the bike. Then I took two round bars, mounted them towards the bottom of the seat stays and had them connected towards the back of the flat bar to create a, a basic frame of my own. Then I took a bike frame and I mounted it on top of that. Here are some close-ups of the frame that was from a bike at a garage sale that was actually very hard to find. I only took the part of the frame going from the seat tube to the front of the bike, flipped it upside down, and mounted onto the bike. I added this bar underneath it for extra strength. This frame gave me extra strength and also gave me a bottom breath as a gearbox rather than a homemade gearbox. Here is part of the frame that I welded on. It is probably lacking the necessary strength. Now let's move on to the crank arms. I made them by taking a socket wrench extending them with a flat bar and then putting a pedal at the end. Initially I had socket wrenches that had an 11 degree handle swing, meaning that it took them 11 degrees to lock and also I didn't have that bar sticking out at a 90 degree angle. I changed the socket wrenches to ones with a 5 degree handle swing, meaning there was a 5 degree area where they wouldn't lock and I put a bar at the and extending out at 90 degrees for extra leverage and force created by the levers themselves. The levers create a force all by themselves. Whenever you have weight extended far away from a pivot point, like the, I have on this bike, it will put a force on that pivot point, hold out a long heavy pole in front of you, and you will know what I am talking about. Here is the pedal with a 
loop attached to it into which I can insert my foot. Here is another view of the crank arms. They wobble back and forth as you can see, which creates energy loss. And also I was told that the gears in the socket wrench have play in them, which is also energy loss. Now here is a view of the front of the bike, which there is nothing really going on, nothing to talk about, unlike the back of the bike. Well, that about wraps up my lecture on the gearsicle. Any thoughts, comments, feedback, please let me know about it in the comments. I would like to know what your thoughts are about this bike. Questions that I have about this bike include, what exactly are the problems with it? I don't fully understand it. What improvements could be made to the idea? And what kind of place could I go to to get it made with high accuracy and precision, such as like machine shops, workshops, factories, engineering places? Please comment on this. Let me know what you think about it. I will be glad to hear your feedback. Also, feel free to let me know about any of your bike projects or bike stories. I'll be happy to give my feedback.